Welcome to New York's number two sports show. The Rangers defeat the Red Wings 3-2. to two. They improved to 16-4-1. And yet again, they have not lost two in a row yet this season. And I got to think they're probably the only team that hasn't done that. I can't say that for sure. But it's just impressive that they're able to, hey, last game against the Sabres, not a good one. Put it behind them. And it wasn't as if this game did not have its struggles. But yet again, just another good third period and a good start, good finish. The middle, that second period, you know, has been a bit of a problem for the Rangers. But uh, and not to say that I don't that I don't see some issues with them, but they, you know, find ways. And but they deserve it too, right? Because you know, I think you look at like two years ago, and that was look. That was just pretty special year for the Rangers. It was. But this feels different than that. And the ceiling could even be higher for this team. And what Peter Laviolette has. I mean, Peter Laviolette has them running on all cylinders. And different contributors. So tonight, Jimmy VZ scores the game-winning goal with 4.15 left in the game. The Rangers were down 2 on going into the third. Keandre Miller ties it up at about the midway point of the third. And then VZ scores what would be the winner fairly late in the third. And he has five goals this year. And at least two, if not three, have been really big ones. This one, right? Tie game, 4.15 left. That scores. It's a big goal. And we'll talk about like the way, the effort to score these goals. A couple games ago versus the Bruins. 3-3 game late in the second and another extra effort goal by VZ gave the Rangers a 4-3 lead. Now, it didn't go down as the game winning goal, but it effectively was in my mind. I, I wish, if you know how the official scoring goes down with Major League Baseball for pitchers, where pitchers get wins, where once their team, and let's keep it simple, and, and I'm not sure, you know, all the baseball fans here, but when you score, when your team takes the lead as a reliever, as long as they never relinquish that lead, they that pitcher is given the win. Um, whereas in hockey, let's say, like in the, in the case of uh, the game against the um, the Bruins, and I'll make this quick. VZ's goal gave them a lead, but because the Bruins eventually scored another goal, that fifth goal ended up being the game winner by Keandre Miller. Point is this, like, even the ones that aren't counting as game-winning goals have been big by VZ. And I think Vince Mercagliano came out with a stat. And look, and, and for that reason, NHL game-winning goals are misleading. So let's take some of it with a grain of salt. Apparently VZ, like, 20, over 25% of VZ's career goals have been game-winning goals. So you had today's, the Bruin game a couple games ago, and then the Devil game a few weeks ago. At the Rock, late in the third, that was probably the biggest goal of the season for him. I, I would say, if I had to rank on that was, that was with what? Less than five, what, like two to three, like maybe three, four minutes left, broke a tie in the third and another goal that, that showed a lot of effort. So he, VZ is someone that I think should be moving up in the lineup. Um, Blake Wheeler, to me, should move down. VZ should move up. And maybe it's not a one-for-one one swap, although it would have to be, right? Because you're not breaking up the Trocheck line, and there's that glaring spot on the Zibanejad line on the right side. And to me, Wheeler does not belong there. I think VZ should move up. Now, the problem with that is, and the problem with Blake Wheeler, is he is not someone that really fills the bottom six role. Now, he was on the third line for a while to start the season when Kaka was on the first line. So it can be done, and I still would do it. But because Wheeler is not great defensively, it's, you know, you're kind of in a spot where it, it's in between. But I, I still think that VZ deserves, if the, let's just put it this way, out of the bottom six slew, VZ is the one to me that I think could be effective and deserves to be moved up. But let's talk about a few other people. Alexi Lafreniere is just, the last like 10 games or so, has been phenomenal. Unbelievably good. Had two assists tonight, including a great assist on a goal by Panarin in the second period. And then he was a pretty driving force after he took a penalty in the third. Late, he comes out of the box and ends up getting an assist on the VZ goal. But, like, he he had been snake-bitten 
where, and I think I mentioned it maybe last episode, where Lafreniere deserved uh, a lot more assists than he had. He'd only had four. Now he has six, and that's going to grow. So I thought he was probably the best player on the ice. It's always, lately it's been between him and Panarin, right? Uh, and I didn't even mention it. Adam Fox returns. Adam Fox came back tonight, and he was good. Uh, you know, he wasn't great, and, and obviously we've come to expect big-time things from Adam Fox, but for his first game back, he was fine. And so, you know, Zach Jones was a healthy scratch, as, you know, you'd expect. But, again, the Rangers, there's just a confidence in them that they're going to find a way to win. That, I mean, that's just what it comes down to. And even though they were down going in the third, even as a fan, it's like, all right, look, we might not win, but you, you, you don't feel so bad about it. So let's get into the game. So first period, and there, this was a pretty entertaining game. So apologies in advance, like there was a lot going on. So apologies in advance if I missed some things. Was, there, was some, there was some penalty reviews. There was a goal review. But in the first period, thought the Rangers played pretty well. You know, the calls may have went their way to an extent. And it's funny, Vincent Trocek, he draws a lot of penalties and he takes a lot of penalties. And that was the case yet again today where he draws a couple, but he also takes a couple. And that, that's just, you know, but hey, he has really had a very good season. So no complaints here, really, as far as Trocek's concerned. But first period early, 153 Peron hooks Trocek. So you get that first power play unit back. Uh, by the way, the goalie matchup was Jesterkin versus Ville Husso. And uh, Adam Fox back on the number one power play unit. Gustafson moves to uh, power play two. And a couple of changes. So obviously, you know, still Lafreniere on there, still Wheeler. But now Kako is hurt, so Brodzinski takes his spot. Johnny Brodzinski, like, again, like, you got to keep him to a minimal role if you can. Um, you know, again, really good in the AHL. And I like that there's, I like his speed, but he doesn't really provide a whole lot else. I know there is some versus, you could do a lot worse than Johnny Brodzinski, but don't love him on the second unit, but I digress. And then Jimmy VZ replaces Will Cooley, uh, which is an interesting decision. And I feel like Will Cooley's game has dipped just a bit, but at the same time, he's a rookie. I think he's done a very fine job through his first 21 or so odd games. So... Rangers get some chances. The first power play unit specifically looked pretty good, uh, but they don't score. Then at 10.54, Olimata hooks Trocek. So a couple of penalties that Trocek draws, but the Ranger power play does not score in either instance. Uh, and there were chances. Um, Kreider had a chance in front. Panarin, uh, and, and this is power play and even strength. Panarin with a great pass from Lafreniere had an opportunity. So I feel like missed opportunities for the Rangers in the first. Um and then, you know, things kind of turn around in the Red Wings' favor. Jimmy Vesey trips uh, Rasmussen with five minutes to go in the period, but the Rangers kill it off. And the Ranger penalty kill continues to do well, even though they did allow a goal in this one towards the end again. So similar to the Buffalo, or was it Boston? Might have been Boston. But yeah, it feels like recently the Rangers have like allowed just that late power play goal where it's a good um, you know minute and a half, minute and 45, and then at the end they allow one. But overall, just the way they're playing has been very solid. Um, so the Rangers kill off that penalty. And so we leave the first period scoreless. Second period starts out well for the Rangers. Uh, at 437, Artemi Panarin scores his 12th goal of the season from Lafreniere and Keandre Miller. I thought Miller had a really nice bounce back game. That miller Truba pair. Miller on the offensive side, Truba we'll talk about at the end on the defensive side. But Miller steals the puck in the neutral zone, moves in with speed, finds Lafreniere. And Lafreniere just with an unbelievable pass to Panarin. And Panarin with a nice wrist shot and buries it, gives the Rangers a 1-0 lead. However, after a really good shift by that line again, Panarin uh, takes a roughing penalty. He roughs Joe Valeno. And, and that was unfortunate because, again, good puck possession, maybe a little bit too much holding on to the puck, but at the end of it, Panarin takes a penalty, and Troy, with how much time left on this? Like 11 seconds left in the power play. Mo Sider scores his third goal of the season from Andrew Kopp and Robbie Fabry. So the former Ranger gets on the board actually a couple of times with some assists, Kopp. But Kopp provided a screen in front of Igor. He didn't deflect it, didn't tip it, but Sider with a nice shot and Chesterkin really couldn't see it. 
ties the game for one. And then immediately, 23 seconds after the Red Wings score again, and it's kind of the same crew. It's Fabry, his fifth goal of the season from Berggren and Kopp. So just like that, to where, you know, Rangers are kind of building momentum and very quickly it turns in Detroit's favor. This was a bad shift by the Zabanajad line, Crowder, Zabanajad, Wheeler, and I would also say Gustafson, Schneider. Not a great shift by any of them. I thought that, you know, just a little bit too soft, I think, in the defensive zone there. And the Red Wings take a 2-1 lead. Then... A penalty to the Rangers at 10:34. Trocheck is called for roughing. Uh, no, sorry. Trips Lucas Raymond, and Lucas Raymond was involved in a lot. And you know, upon review, that was not a great call. They should not have called tripping on Trocheck, but they do. The Red Wings have a power play. Igor makes a lot of good saves. The Rangers kill it off. Like that's the thing, and that's happened a lot this year where Igor has kept the Rangers in it, or Jonathan Quick for that matter. But you know. I think Shesterkin's kind of an unsung hero here. We're not going to talk about him much, but I thought that when they were down to one, when it was tied, like he made some really, really big saves. And who knows? Detroit scores one more goal and this whole thing could have turned. So it stays 2-1 Detroit, and that would be the score at the end of two. We go to the third. And going to the third, again, you again, I'm confident that they will do the right things play a solid third, and that's exactly what happened, and they were rewarded for that. So in the third, early, and this was kind of a fucked up thing too, where Will Cooley, um, Will Cooley is called for boarding Shane Goss to spare at 2.15, and then Clem Costin comes in and really drops the gloves with Will Cooley. To me, it was Basically a clean hit by Cooley. Gossespierre unfortunately goes down and he was a little in a little bit of pain. And so it was kind of a reaction. But really, it should have been power play Rangers as Costin just goes right in there and instant, you know, kind of a, a third man in, if you will. I'm trying to think of a better way to describe it. But didn't love that call, but I'm also not surprised by it. And I guess it could have been worse. Again, my expectations for, for these officials is not all that great. So I guess the outcome could have been worse. Uh Rangers had some chances. To tie this thing up earlier, one that comes to mind is Trocek. Zibanejad sets Trocek up wide open in front, and he just, he looked like Ryan Strong. Like, he just, I don't know what happened there. Goes off his skate, and it was as if he was, like, playing defense for the Red Wings. Didn't make much sense. Should have been a fairly easy tap-in. Doesn't happen. Uh, but at 9-14, Keandre Miller ties it up, his third goal of the season from Zabanajan and, Tru and Truba. So again, that Zabanajan miller combination, like the Bruin game, right? I talked about VZ made it 4-3 in the second period against Boston. Well, that late second period goal was Zabanajan to Miller. Great play by Mika here, who, who honestly hadn't had a great game up to that point. I didn't think he did, but really showed a lot of patience, finds Miller, and he scores. The tied up at two. Then at 13:29, Lafreniere, being a little too aggressive, is called for holding Jake Wallman. And I can't totally complain with this one. You know, it seemed like Lafreniere just kind of stuck with it a little bit too long. But you know, what? I'd rather him be over aggressive than under aggressive. So I don't, I don't. Bad timing, not all that smart. But again, the intentions were were all right. Um, so and then the Ranger penalty guild does a really, really good job. And, and again, I'm using that word, rewarded. They are rewarded with a goal 16 seconds after it expires. Jimmy Vesey scores his fifth goal of the season from Lafreniere and Trocek. So what happens is Lafreniere gets the puck with some room, takes a shot. I think it might have been deflected by a defenseman, and Vesey takes an initial shot on, on Huso, then a bat in the air, backhand, and in. VZ's had a knack for these backhand goals, like these in-the-air goals. So, again, some skill is involved here, but just a great, great work ethic. And they reviewed it to see if the stick was under the crossbar. It was the it was kind of close, but I think it was the right call, especially considering that the call on the ice was a goal. So, again, can't say enough about VZ. Look, he was a healthy scratch for what? I think VZ was a healthy scratch for two of the first three games of the season. 
and hasn't looked back. And it wasn't that he did anything wrong. It was kind of a numbers game. And, and last year as well, VZ, I think, was a healthy scratch early on. And he took off from there. But I think VZ ended up with about 11 goals last year. He's got five. So figure, good chance he'll end up in that 10 to, you know, if he stays healthy, we'll end up in that 10 to 15 range. He is a very valuable contributor and a versatile one. It's just so funny when you think about him. Where the first three seasons with the Rangers, he, you know, there's a lot of hype around Jimmy Vesey. And I thought his rookie year was not terrible, although it still felt like there was a lot left to be desired. And I, I think overall, his first three, you know, those three seasons, Ranger was, was underwhelming, honestly. I, I don't think Ranger fans looked back on those too fondly. Was he like a, a most hated player? No, not at all. But, you know, I, I would say that to no fault of his own, like, the hype just didn't match up. Now, all of a sudden, he comes back in a new role, in a bottom six type of role, and has excelled and has, and has kind of become, um, I won't go as far as say fan favorite, but he's well-liked by the Ranger fan base. So, And I feel like I'm still not talking enough about Alexis Lafreniere. I feel like VZ is like kind of the story here, but Lafreniere is like building and building, and I, I, I wonder if other Ranger fans feel this way. Like, you want him on the ice, that him, Panarin, whether it was with Hedl or Trocek, has been a great, great duo and line for whichever center is in the middle there. But Lafreniere, like, and I know that there's probably extra excitement for Ranger fans who did not want him to turn out to be a bust or, or something to that extent. And he is showing that, you know, maybe he won't be. And, and, and that was probably, that word was extreme anyway, but like more to the fact like that he can be like an upper echelon, true top end player. I think that is possible. And, and I was starting to lose a little bit of faith in the fact like, hey, like maybe he'll be a good NHL player, but never a star. He could still become that. What is he still 21? Like I can't say enough about the way he's played. I hope he can stay consistent, but it's been there. And so Rangers went 3-2. Things got interesting at the end because they took a penalty. Trocek at 18.04 tripped Sprong. So again, the Trocek penalty. And that was a penalty. He tripped him. But like Nick Benino and Barkley Goodrow, um, guys that are relied upon, you know, and I know that they were on for that first power play goal, but they've done a really nice job, whether it be on face-offs, blocking shots, being in the right position. But Jacob Truba in the last 30 seconds was just phenomenal. Um, he was a madman, uh, and not in the way of hitting, but in the way of blocking shots, just being in the right place. And he just would not let that puck go through. Um, so it's been a really nice season for Truba, who I'm very happy he's off the power play. None of that. Like, that just didn't work. And Truba, who I thought had a very good 2022 regular season. I want to keep that specific because the, I, I don't have fond memories of the playoffs that he had specifically the Lightning series, but Truba, really good um, a couple years ago, but I don't know. This season feels, it's not as offensive in the in the ways of goals and points as it was that year. Uh, you know, he had about 10 goals, and, and his back to his days in Winnipeg, this was a guy that produced points. He was a number one power play unit guy that did that, but I like the role he has now, and I just, he there's, there's more of a steadiness to his game. Like, you think back to times last season, and, and and previous years for True Bears Ranger, and it wasn't good. And, and so, like, he is someone that does deserve that credit because, you know, he, he gets paid a lot of money, but he's really showing his value. And he has been a good captain. I was skeptical uh, of that decision. And wow, I mean, he is, like, I could, under I, I, I could understand why some might say he is a modern-day Scott Stevens. Like, with the bone crushing hits and just like, you gotta fear, if you're on the other team, you gotta fear him. If nothing, like whether he hits you or not, you gotta be like, hey, where is number eight on the ice? So it's nice to have a player like that on this team. Uh, and, and it's funny, like when he, I don't think like the scouting report from his days in Winnipeg, I think he's kind of changed his game a bit. I don't, I don't I don't necessarily think that that was his game, but that's what it's been now. And you need to have players like that uh, if you wanna, you know, make a deep run. So Rangers find a way. They win 3-2 versus the Red Wings. So then that's two wins on the season versus Detroit. And now next, they will take on the Nashville Predators. Um, and Rangers will, Rangers will look to exact some revenge. 
which I hope they can tap into. Again, we've seen it in, in some previous instances this year. Um, and I'm hoping that they can do it again. Nashville won't be easy. They, I think, are on a winning streak. Um, let's see. Six-game winning streak for Nashville. They went from 5-10 and 10 to 11-10. and 10. They're a pretty good home team, even though they won at MSG. They play tomorrow night. Um, home against the Wild, who they're on the other side of the spectrum. You know, Dean Evison got fired. They are playing terribly. So we'll see what comes to that game. But either, whether they win or lose, like, this will be an interesting game. You know, Peter Laviolette, former Nashville Predator coach, like, back-to-back -back for the Rangers Saturday at Nashville, then home against San Jose. And, and with San Jose, we'll talk about that more in the Nashville episode, previewing that. But San Jose, I believe they're still, yes, they're 0-9 on the road. So you don't want their first road win being against you. I, I, uh, well, I guess let me see real quick if they have any road games leading up to that one. Or if they'll be 0-9. They play at Boston. They play at the Devils. So they have two road games at the Bruins and the Devils. I can't imagine they win either of those, but stranger things have happened. So, um, but, but really, specifically looking forward to that Nashville game. Because of the fact they are playing better. Because of the fact that they really beat, up, beat the Rangers fairly handily. Igor got pulled in that game. That was Jonathan Quick's first appearance as a Ranger. So, you know, that one will be one uh, of, of intrigue. For me, at least, even though it's a Western Conference matchup. So, uh, Rangers beat the Detroit Red Wings 3-2. They improved to 16-4-1. And, and like I said, now they will head to Nashville to take on the Predators on Saturday.